Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense, this season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first five commandments, and now it's time to tackle the sixth, Thou shalt not commit adultery. However, if we want to understand what God meant when he gave this commandment to the people of Israel, it helps to know a little bit about the language that it was originally written in. Hebrew, the language that the Old Testament was originally written in, is a very ancient and beautiful language which has neither vowels nor punctuation, and most of the time passages can be boiled down to a series of basic Hebrew root words, which carry a similar meaning, though not necessarily the exact same meaning, depending on how they're used. This can make the language exceptionally poetic and beautiful when a single word is used, as it often is in the Old Testament, to refer to multiple related concepts at the same time. Now, we in the Western world are very concerned with specific definitions, and I'm probably more concerned with that than most. But it isn't always possible to do this when translating from a language like Hebrew due to the structure of the language. You almost need to already know what the original authors meant to say before you translate it. Fortunately, the Holy Spirit does know what the original authors meant to say, and has given this information to the Catholic Church. The Church has taught consistently that the word adultery used in the Old Testament comes from a root word referring to the flesh of the human body and sins of that flesh. In other words, any form of sexual unchastity is condemned by the Sixth Commandment. Because these forms of unchastity are so numerous, it'll probably take a while to fully explore the implications of Commandment 6. So for now, in this episode, I'll start with a review of the meaning and purpose of chaste sex. In episode 41, we talked about how chastity is about showing proper respect to yourself, your body, your spouse, their body, and the rights of your children. What we didn't discuss is how to properly respect these things. In the section on murder, we talked a little about proper respect for other living creatures, children and parents alike, but what about the body? How do you show proper respect for the body? Well, you show respect for the body by using it in the way that it was designed to be used. For example, if you take a bottle of glue and you smash it open with a hammer getting glue everywhere, you failed to properly respect the glue bottle because you didn't use it in the way that it was designed to be used. The same is true of all forms of sex. The bodily activity known as sex was designed by God to fulfill an important role in our lives, to serve as the ultimate and consummate stage of union between a husband and wife, in their act of total self-giving to one another, an act which also allows for new life to be created. This is a magnificent power, and an incredible holy act in which we share in the power of God to beget life. And the only way that we can fully understand the problems with sexual unchastity is by looking at the act in this way first, having all the characteristics and functions listed above, and reminding ourselves that every last one is an amazingly good thing. The union between husband and wife is good, since the uniting of two people can bring about greater good than just one. The act of total self-giving is probably the greatest good we're capable of as mortals. Finally, the power to create living things after our own image is our greatest physical power as human beings. Every Christian should recognize and cherish these goodnesses, and recognize that all of them are proper to the sexual act. When we see sex in this way, we're choosing to show proper respect for our bodies. Next time, lust. What is lust, and does it fall under the Sixth Commandment? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.